Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are completing our series today on 2022's external exams in Queensland, Australia. This is a general maths question from paper two. It's the very last question looking at earth geometry. And the main focus here today are some skills on time zones, calculating time differences, and also calculating um, distance traveled and what speed is used and what time results. So let's get right into the question. You live in Queensland and your friend is on a cruise ship holiday. As their ship departs from X to travel 1,350 kilometres from due west to Tarawa, your friend sends you a message saying, local time 6.12am Wednesday and enjoying the sunrise as our ship begins its trip to Tarawa. So here we have a map that we've provided in the exam. So here's Queensland over here on the far left. And we've got Tarawa, the little island that they're heading towards. And the cruise ship is currently at position X. It's a confusing looking map. Don't let that bamboozle you too much. We will get into what all of the different words mean in a moment. There's lots of lines and boxes everywhere representing the different time zones. And this is a complicated part of the ocean in the Pacific there where there are lots of time zones happening. What we have to do is we um, are planning to phone our friend as soon as they arrive in Tarawa. Assuming their trip, their ship is travelling at 50 kilometres an hour, we need to determine the time in Queensland when we need to phone our friend. Okay, so we've got some questions that are coming out of this. Firstly, what time is it in Queensland when the friend sent the text? It was 6.12am Wednesday when they were over here at position X, but what time and day was it here in Queensland? The next question I would have is, how long is it going to take to get between X and Tarawa? So it doesn't look like they're very far apart, but they're actually 1,350 kilometres apart. That's about the distance, a bit more than Sydney to Brisbane. It's a bit further away. So it's quite a distance that they're going to be travelling. doesn't look like much on the map, but it is a distance. So I want to know, what time is it when the first text arrived? How long are they going to take to get to their destination? Because that's when I need to make the phone call. And then what time would it be in Queensland when that friend arrives in Tarawa so that I can then make that call? Okay, so there's three questions that are sort of um, leading me towards my solution. I'm going to premise this by saying that um, the QCAA solution that's on their website is slightly different to my solution. When I worked this out, I worked it out um, following these three questions and I got to the right place. Sometimes when you're problem solving, you don't always follow someone else's exact procedure or pathway. In fact, my pathway personally, I think was a much simpler pathway to get there. Um, so th this question is worth seven marks. Um, I think the QCAA, if you found a different way to get to the solution that was very clearly laid out and well organized, I think they would have awarded you the seven marks for that as well. Okay, so let's first of all focus on this first question we're asking ourselves. What time is it over here? when my friend sends the text from the cruise ship. So if we look first of all at these words up the top, GMT, Green Greenwich Meridian Time. We're in a plus 10 time zone here and we need to just focus on X. X is in a minus 12 time zone. So you might be thinking, but hang on, they're further forward, shouldn't they be, because it goes 10, 11, 12, why did it suddenly jump back 12? Well, you'll notice here we've got this international date line. That's the date line on the world where the world flips to a different day. So X is behind that time zone. So that means that even though it's Wednesday there, it's actually later in the day on Wednesday or even early in the morning on Thursday over here. Okay, these are one of the last people on earth to receive a time and date. Um, everybody else has already experienced 7, 6, 12 a.m. Wednesday. Um, you can see it's all flipped over here. So they are the latest people on earth. That means in Queensland, they are a lot ahead. So understanding what an international date line does, how that works. Um, even if you didn't fully understand that, you could still work out the answer just by focusing on these GMT positionings. So firstly, um, I've got my position as plus 10, X is minus 12. The time difference, I'm going to subtract negative 12 from 10. Now remember, negative, negative becomes positive. So it's the same as adding the two together. So 10 plus 12 makes 22 hours time difference. Okay, I would guarantee you some people got that one wrong. Um, so even if it's a negative here, you can still do um, negative, negative, make that a positive. 
Okay, so we've got a 22 hour time difference. This position here of X is 22 hours behind my time in Queensland. So firstly, I got my first mark here for correctly determining that time difference between Queensland and X. As I've put here, the QCAA actually awards a mark for something slightly different because their solution has been achieved in a different way. Okay, so I'm gonna take their Wednesday, 6, 12 a.m. And I'm going to add 22 hours to that. You might be thinking, why aren't I taking it away? Because this is takeaway. No, they are further ahead. They are uh, Queensland is much further ahead, in fact, almost a whole day. Now, you could sit there and go 6, 12, 7, 12, 8, 12, 9, 12, 10, 12. That's very easy to make mistakes. Have a look here. They're almost 24 hours ahead. They're 22 hours. So I could simply change this to Thursday, 6, 12 a.m., and then just take the two hours away. That's a much quicker way of getting there. Or you could just add on 22, it's a little bit tedious. What we find is that in Queensland, when that text arrived, it was Thursday 4, 12 a.m. when you got that text. Okay, so that's our first part. We've answered that first question. We've also appropriately applied a time difference here and the QCAA solution for this little part of the question was also a little bit different. We've got two of our seven marks for working out that time difference. Okay, so the next question we want to ask is, okay, we know what time they received the text, Thursday 4.12 a.m. Now we've got to wait for that cruise ship to get to Tarawa. So how long is it going to take to get there? Because that's when we need to make the phone call. So firstly, we know the ship is traveling at 50 kilometers an hour. We know there's 1,350 kilometers to travel. Now this is going to rely on your prior knowledge from early high school. You learn this in year seven and eight, touch on it a little in year nine when you're looking at rates. A distance and a kilometers per hour is a rate. And we know that our formula is distance divided by speed equals time. So you need to know that formula. It's not on your formula sheet. You need to know that one in your head. Okay, so I'm going to take 1350, divide that by 50, it's going to take 27 hours to travel this distance here. I told you it was a long way apart and the cruise ship isn't going particularly fast. So 27 hours. So we've started at, it's Thursday in Queensland at 4.12 a.m. We've got to wait another 27 hours. So we're going to be adding another 27 hours onto that so that we can find out what time to make that phone call. Now we've got two points here. Um, one mark for correctly using a rule and another mark for correctly working out the 27 hours of travel time. So we're halfway through the question. So now what time is it going to be when our friend is arriving? Well, we take that Thursday, 4, 12 a.m., add 27 hours. Now, the quick trick to this is to break that 27 up into 24 hours, one day, and whatever's left over, which is three hours. So if I simply add a day on, that makes it Friday, 4, 12 a.m. and then add the three more hours on that makes that Friday 7 12 a.m. and I got another mark here for correctly determining the time difference between Queensland and Tarawa and I've written a statement at the end I've got a um, another mark for the correct time and day when the ship is arriving and there is a seventh mark here for the organization and communication of those key steps. So like I said at the very beginning, even though my solution is marginally different to the QCAA solution, it still got me there. I got there in an organized way so I could still earn the full seven marks. Well, did you find this video helpful today? And if you did, there's some ways that you can engage with us further. Firstly, you could like and subscribe um, to our channel and hit that notifications bell so you always know when the next video is available. You could share this with a friend. Uh, maybe that's that friend on the cruise ship. You might have to wait a couple of days, get up real early in the morning and then send them a message with a video. Um, you could tell us in the comments or why not follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram and always like to hear from you there. And um, if you've got any questions at all about anything you saw in today's video, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com is where you can email us. It's a, bit, a good place to ask questions, request videos of different topics or anything else you want to share. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video series was super helpful to you and I wish you all the best in your upcoming external exams too. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.